why has the center stocks with the farmers failed to make any breakthrough so far there has been five rounds of talks with the farmers yet the two sides have not come to a consensus as of now there's another round of talks lined up for the 9th of december and one has to in fact wait and see whether that creates any breakthrough at all now the important point is to understand that why have the talks failed why is there still a deadlock let's look at the two sides well on one side the issue of the msp the minimum support price the trade off that the farmers are being given is that while you have the government regulated mandis you also have the private mandis operating uh, alongside the government mandis and therefore there can be a better price for the farm produce in these private mandis where there is no cess there is no tax and therefore they are in a position to give a better price with that argument the government feels that there is uh, an attempt to create bigger opportunities better opportunities and more avenues for the farmers the reality is that these uh, the this option of selling to the private players always existed it is not something that has only been brought about now but here is an attempt to now create private mandis outside the government mandis to facilitate that so the issue is not so much about bringing about any kind of a, a change but it is more about greater facilitation and deregulation now what the government does not say however is that how will the existing apmc market survive with the onslaught of these private mandis like i said the private mandis would not have the apmc tax which is imposed by the state government this is again a source of revenue for the state government so if uh, these mandis operate how can the government regulated mandis survive and sustain themselves in such an uneven playing field this is a question that the government has not answered and the farmers are not okay with this trade off while they would have had no problems with more private players being brought in um, with the corporates uh, pitching in uh, to uh, to procure the farm produce they would definitely have an issue with the phasing out of the apmc market because that is their basic uh, safety net which they cannot afford to do away with and so this kind of a trade off that we give you more options we give you better trading opportunities but you would have to eventually settle for doing away with the government regulated mandis that kind of a trade off is what the farmers are unwilling to accept which is why there is this deadlock the second issue is like i said the issue of msp uh is again a, a slightly complex but it's important to understand that the government has always found it uh, a burden to the state exchequer and there are also enough policy makers who have opined that uh, first of all there are differences of opinion on how the msp is calculated and there are enough policy makers who think that uh, uh the msp actually distorts the natural uh trade and price uh, cycle which which uh, should be at play so setting an msp distorts that kind of a trade cycle and therefore it is uh, it is uh, you know better off being done away with so there are enough policy makers who have actually spoken about doing away with the msp and whether the government admits it or not uh, there seems to be an an intention to actually phase out the msp why else would there be not a single mention of the msp anywhere in the farm law so that is why the deadlock the farmers cannot accept to do away with what is their basic assured income the minimum support price and the government is reluctant to give a legal sanctity so all this lip service about well the msp stays has no meaning unless there is a legal guarantee given to it and what's on the other side on the other side uh, the argument is also that uh, all the other political parties who are today coming out hammer and tongs against the agricultural laws in their tenure also pitched for a similar reform they are saying that the government wants to corporatize the agriculture sector uh, they are saying that this is a very convenient way of the government to abdicate its responsibility towards the farmers and relinquish their duty to uh, provide that subsidy 
through uh, the, the MSP system. But the reality is whether it is the NCP or it is the Samajwadi party or the Congress party for that matter during the UPA uh, regime had pitched for precisely the same reforms that they are today opposing. And we had the union law minister Ravi Shankar Prasad talking about in detail listing out uh, the exact provisions that were proposed by the other parties. He uh, quoted the instance of Mulayam Singh Yadav as part of the Standing Committee of Agriculture proposing these reforms. He also quoted uh, Sharad Pawar as the Agriculture Minister talking about farm reforms as the urgent need of the hour. Uh, so basically, yes, the government continues to argue that the other political parties are fueling this protest. Bulk of the farmers are from Punjab. Uh, Punjab being a Congress rule state, uh, the government uh, has very conveniently argued that this is being fueled from there and uh, this is being actually uh, done or instigated by the anti-BJP forces to corner the government, use this issue uh, as a political hot potato. Well, those are the two sides. Thanks for watching Two Sides with Afrida.